بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله Islam calls us to khair and everything that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is khair and it's true and it's haq walau kari al-kafirun walau kari al-ahla il-had walau kari al-ahla al-bid'a wa zandaka Ahabat tifillah it's very important that we strengthen our iman and that we continue to stay in the text and that we stop where the Salaf al-Saleh stopped and that is a reminder first and foremost to myself because the shaitan will come to you and as we've seen from recent news and we won't mention but about one of the particular du'at who's been known for their bid'ah for some time but who is a person who has knowledge is a person who studied with Mashaykh Ahl Sunnah a person who's left and uh, graduated from the institutions of Ahl Sunnah but now expresses doubt in the Qur'an وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ and أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ that's because when the people don't stop where the Salaf stopped when the people involve themselves in all kind of shubahat even if they have a lot of tools it's very dangerous and not everyone escapes and again believing in the Qur'an believing in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an obligation and that's what keeps you grounded because there's no doubt, there's all kind of shubahat and people calling into doubt the uh, Abu Huraira, for example, radiallahu ta'ala an, who's Amir al Mu'minin hadith. And there's people, all kind of uh, Orientalists and others, who call into doubt the Quran and the Shia Arafidah. They attack the Quran, the authenticity of the Quran. They attack the Sahaba who are the transmitters of the religion, radiallahu ta'ala an, majma'een. So all of these shubahat, if you go and involve yourself in the internet, and you involve yourself in sittings, and you don't have the tools to deal with that, and perhaps even if you have the tools, it shows us the danger. Because there are learned men from amongst us who go astray, some of them who even go to ilhad and leave the religion. So be comforted in your faith and stop where the self stopped. And know the asl is going back to those characteristics of the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has uh, described for us in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, for, exa for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ بَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ أَلِفْ لَامِّيمِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدٍ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبُ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ أُولَئِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ إلى آخر آية الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم من سورة البقرة ألف لام ميم and we don't know the meanings of ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه we don't know the meaning but we do know this is a book, or that is a book when there, which in there is no doubt. What happened to individuals who study the deen? Now they find doubt. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because once you have doubt, you've destroyed your whole foundation of the religion. If you leave the Quran, you, you've gone. I, I listened to recently a particular individual, and I try not to involve myself that much in the internet with those kind of things on YouTube. But I came across some guy who's an apostate, another apostate guy, who was doing da'wah. Again, he was going way beyond his level in knowledge, and he was debating people. Why are you debating when you haven't studied? Great, you learned a little bit of Arabic. I heard him speak some Arabic and mention some hadith. And he was calling a question about hadith. He got doubt in his heart, and it was all around shubahat, around jihad, and around taking uh, uh, war booty and, and slaves and so forth. So all of his shubahat came from this. To, to, to the extent what? Ilhad. Zandaka. And this is because you involve yourselves. Things that you left in your heart. Instead of taslim bin nusus. And that is imperative. That is imperative. That's the asl. Because once you begin to doubt the Quran. Once you begin to doubt the sunnah. Your religion is gone. You, you're, you're, there's nothing left. What, that is what is, is called for you to be a believer, to be a Muslim, 
is that you stand on that foundation, Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or else you've just made up your own religion. You become Baha'i, you become some other thing, nation of Islam, where you take a little piece of Islam, a little bit of Christianity, a little bit of Masonry, a little bit of this, and you just throw it together because it feels good. And it's a belief you can stay and just walk with in the dunya and and and, and uh, feel comfortable about yourself, I guess. But Islam, not everything are you going to be able to debate. And not every hikmah and wisdom are you going to understand. The ulama, no, none of the ulama claim to understand every single thing, every single aspect of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the Quran and every ayat and every everything to know the wisdom, the divine wisdom. No. Not every single thing are you going to know. It's there. Alif Lam Mim. We don't know what it means. But Allah said, trust in Him. Alif Lam Mim. That is a, that is a book which is, wherein there's no doubt. Hudun Lil Muttaqeen. What is it? It's a Hudun Lil Muttaqeen. It's a guidance for mankind. Taslim Bin Nusus. You know, being comforted by those texts. Hudan lil muttaqin alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb Those who believe in the ghayb they believe in the unseen So we have we have to understand we have different levels of knowledge The ulama wala alhamd cuz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them they're the warath al anbiya they are the inheritors of the prophet kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam Due to that they can deal with that shubhat as Imam Ibn al Qayyim said that the one with knowledge he, his knowledge is like a, a sword slashing away at the shubahat, slashing at it, cutting the shubahat, cutting the doubt. But the one who doesn't, even the student of knowledge, and then from then the beginning student of knowledge, not the big students of knowledge, and then there's those who are wasid in the middle, and then there's those who, who are just beginning on the Talib al -Am. Then there's the general Muslims. Then from amongst them they have different levels. Everyone has a different level. The point is do not involve yourself in shubahat, those things which are going to cause doubt in your heart. And very important, very, very important, I want to mention this, and I hope that this uh, goes to others, that they will take this one thing, if nothing else from what I say, because I've seen it, I've seen it destroy people. People who were calling to Allah, people who were at least had the opportunity to do Talib al ilm people, you know, whatever the case may be, and they were destroyed by getting into debates. And this is what the Salaf spoke about. And our ulama speak about this. They, they warn us against this. Why? Because when you involve yourself with debating and you don't have the tools, the asal is it's against the minaj of the, uh, the Salaf, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also makes exception. Jadalahum bi. You know, uh, I guess you might say debate with them with that which is better. So, you know, with clear burhan, clear hujja, clear evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. But don't debate about shubahat and things you don't have knowledge about. And way above your level, way outside your level, way outside, as they say, outside your lane. Be humble and don't involve yourself. I had Shia who wanted to debate me and others in Ashadis who've uh, you know, sent messages, I want to debate you. Never would I debate them. Never. Never. But if I find one of them and he says something and I have the ability and I know the, the text with regards to that and I know the, the methodology of the Salaf, then I'll correct them. But I will not involve myself in debating. I don't know what level he's on, nor do I open that majal because maybe you, even if you are victorious in the sense that you have established the proof, whether he accepts it or not is another story. Whether the people around it are convinced is another story. So you can end up spreading that shubahat. Instead, we just give them the burhan, the idnillah, and leave it. We give them the haq. So be wearing of debating, because this can lead you to ilhad and zandaka. Beware of going into shubahat and listening to the people who are attacking you and attacking your religion and bringing powerful shubahat sometimes. Avoid it. Absolutely. Stick with Kitabi Law Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Minhaj of the Salaf. Stick with that. Because you see it. And as this particular individual spoke who got into a high level of academia, they graduated from a Western University after having graduated from uh, a prestigious Islamic university. 
And with that, they found that a lot of the academics that are in the field are plagued with doubt in Zandaka, wa ilhad. Because they're always challenging and most of them are not they're not they're not scholars anyway. They're not even on that level. Yes, they have good knowledge of Islamic history perhaps. Yes, they have uh, they've went through a lot of different texts and so forth. But they weren't necessarily tulab al ilm These people are academics in the Western world. They went through a whole particular different type of scholarship which is not classical Islamic scholarship. It's very far. It's a wide, wide difference. And to be grounded in the text is very different. So the point being, beware shubahat. Ittaqu shubahat. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-halal bayin wa haram bayin wa baynahum umur mushtabiha la ya'lamun wa kathir min al-nas. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the halal is clear. The haram is clear. But between them there's shubahat. And most of the people are unaware of this. La ya'lamun kathir min al-nas. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَتَّقُوا shubahat." And he said, fear the shubahat. Because it's like the, the shepherd who's grazing his sheep in, uh, in, a, in a place which is very close to the boundaries of someone else. And then those sheep can bleed over and cross those bounds. So you want to be careful of that, ahabat fillah. Stay within the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beware of shubahat. Beware of those things that will lead you to zambaka. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us all and bless us with a class with the bat. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَلَا تَمُتُّنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Fear Allah and do not die except on a state of Islam. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم إسلام دينا. This day I've perfected or completed my religion for you and completed my favor upon you and declared for you Islam your religion. Or I'm pleased for you Islam is the religion. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Islam. Don't lose your Islam. Know that it's perfect. And when the shaitan comes to you with the shubahat, fight it by spinning to your left three times. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim And saying, Amitu billahi wa rasuli. I believe in Allah and I believe in his messenger. And keep mashing. Get up out of there. Get away from that shubahat. Cut it off and get back to Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa madhab as salaf and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas with the bad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.